Russia has been and is a reliable gas supplier to Europe. It was, it was not our initiative to introduce sanctions against Russia. So you should ask, first of all, these reckless European politicians who absolutely do not give a damn about the interests of their, of their own people. I can tell you nothing about Russia's attack on this plant because it didn't happen. I can tell you a lot about Ukrainian attack on this plant, which is the truth. But I don't know whether you are ready to hear this truth. So we warned repeatedly about Ukrainian provocations against uh, this Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. We spoke out about this at the Security Council meeting on the 29th of July, because there was an attack uh, with two kamikaze drones, uh, US made uh, by Ukrainian forces. And I also highlighted lack of uh, reaction to this uh, and assessment of this uh, barbarous attack by our Western colleagues who were very much uh, active uh, back in March uh, when Ukrainians were saying that uh, the safety of the plant uh, is uh, put at question. Now, uh, there was a second Ukrainian attack. There was, in, in, in fact, shelling by, uh, I think, uh, U.S. ammunition and uh, U.S. Uh, long-range uh, artillery. Uh, there is some equipment which is damaged. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, there is no critical damage to the station and uh, there is no, so far, any threat. But, but Mr. Polyansky... The Ukrainian right, behavior but is, very, is very reckless and uh, absolutely... Uh, it's, it's incredible how they can do it. And now you claim also that this was a Russian attack. Uh, why would we do it? Well, can Ukraine has me? been very... Mr. Polyansky, if I could put yeah. it to you, Ukraine sure. is saying very clearly that it did not carry out this attack. It is saying that this was car carried out by Russian forces or Russian-backed forces in that area. There is no reason for Ukraine to attack its own nuclear plant. <laughs> This, this nuclear pl plant is under Russian control, so why would we attack our, our nuclear plant and uh, why would we put in danger the life of our servicemen? And uh, Ukraine has been refuting for a long time our claims that uh, Ukraine is using uh, schools and kindergartens and hospitals uh, as places for, for their fighters and uh, this endangering, thus endangering the population. Now you have the Amnesty International report. So how long have, has been Ukraine denying it? Uh, for how many months? The same thing without, with this uh, Zaporozhye uh, nuclear power plant. Uh, it's the same Ukrainian lies and the same crimes of Kyiv regime and uh, the cover-up of Western countries, including the UK, unfortunately. Well, the UK Defence Ministry says Russia is now using this power plant and the area around it to launch uh, attacks using the protected status of the nuclear power plant. That's not the, that's not the truth, and that's not this, the thing that is being uh, confirmed by IAEA. IAEA reports uh, were absolutely calm about this situation, and we were open to let uh, IAEA a team uh, to this plant, and it was Ukrainian side that was not uh, giving green light to this operation, because, of course, their lies would have been uh, disclosed and uh, they were not interested in such a mission. So, uh, and frankly, what the things that uh, United, United Kingdom Defense Ministry has been saying, uh, they are not trustworthy for quite a long period and we don't even listen to what they say. What about the attack on the prison camp at Olanivka? Have the Russian authorities now allowed access to investigators, independent investigators from the United Nations, from the Red Cross, to establish what has happened there, because this was an attack in which at least 50 Ukrainian prisoners of war died. Yes, that was another terrible crime of, of Kyiv regime, and we were open for the investigation from the outset. Uh, I transferred a letter to Secretary General Guterres uh, on uh, sending some uh, team uh, fact-finding mission there, and uh, UN responded, and this work is now uh, in process uh, to agree on terms of reference. I know that our, our ICRC experts are also welcome and uh, there will be a team of international journalists and experts on the spot. We have absolutely nothing to hide there because the circumstances of this crime are absolutely clear. The, it was uh, committed with the, uh, with the US uh, supplied uh, HIMARS uh, multiple launch rocket system. And uh, we have absolutely no reasons uh, to, 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 to not to provide access to the site. There are a lot of witnesses. And uh, as you know, there were the as of fighters uh, who uh, gave in to Russian forces and they started to tell uh, unpleasant things about the Kyiv regime and Kyiv regime became very angry and very anxious and that was the reason behind this attack. I think this is crystal clear. Every, but everyone Ukraine with the logic, has said uh, that it has, but sir, Ukraine has said that it has evidence that this was carried out 
by Russian forces using Russian weapons. Well, again, uh, this is kind of propaganda ministry of Ukraine who is doing this. Uh, I, again, I refer to Ukraine has said that it has never placed its uh, troops and artillery in, uh, in civilian areas. And uh, look, at even, even Amnesty International has, uh, has to admit this. It means that the scope of this uh, problem is, is terrifying. And we have been say, telling this from the very outset. Why should we believe the Ukrainian side? The Ukrainian side is telling us a lot of, uh, a lot of lies about Bucha, for example, despite the fact that there are already a lot of uh, witnesses, a lot of uh, coverage of this, uh, this cover-up of Ukraine with the help of uh, Western countries. And so, Well, yes, we and there are now numerous Ukraine investigations says? in that area into um, what do appear to be war crimes. Let me ask you about the situation in the Donbass. How close okay. is Russia to gaining full control of the Donbass region. President Zelensky warned uh, civilians to leave Donetsk earlier in the week. Well, uh, I'm not a military expert, of course. I'm sitting here in New York, so I can only relay the news that I received from there. And uh, the news says that uh, Ukrainian defense is crumbling. And uh, the problem is that not only uh, the Ukrainian defense is crumbling, uh, the, the problem is that the, the people don't want to fight. Uh, Ukrainian soldiers don't want to fight. They give in. And also the population of Donbass is very much welcoming uh, Russian troops and uh, Donetsk People's Republic troops. And this is a big problem for Ukraine. It's a big uh, reputational damage. They were saying that... Well, as you know, there are there. also many stories of Russian soldiers who are giving up. But if Russia manages to take control of the whole of Donbass... Will that be mission accomplished? Will President Putin at that stage seek to call a halt to this bloodshed and try to negotiate peace? Well, this is the question much above my payroll, of course. Uh, I'm not the one who will be taking the decision, but uh, we were... I would uh, hope that President Putin <laughs> might talk to you about his war aims. OK, uh, let's, let's hope on this. But, uh, you know, there are there is a distribution of powers and uh, distribution of responsibility in any country. Of course, there, there is Ministry of Defense in my country who is responsible for these things and who are giving advice to, to, uh, to, to President Putin, of course. So I can tell you that we were uh, promoting the idea of, uh, of negotiations and peaceful settlement uh, from the outset. You know that there were negotiations in March, but the Ukrainian side, after... Uh, taking advice from uh, from London and from Washington, decided to fight uh, 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 until the last Ukrainian, uh, and uh, they absolutely no re not ready to come to negotiation table, and uh, their approach uh, is not serious. Uh, that's why, frankly, we don't see well, it's so far they're, any reasons they're, for they're, negotiation. It's because their civilians and their forces are still still coming under relentless attack from the Russians who've invaded no, it's all, their territory, it's, isn't it's it? It's all because it's all because of the of the war that uh, is that is lasting for eight years already that was absolutely neglected uh, by the West and by the Ukraine. Uh, and now Ukraine is uh, bearing the consequences of this war because our special military operation and not war was started uh, to stop this war that is was going on for eight years in Donbass. Uh, and uh, now our aim is to make these people safe, first and foremost, to stop the shellings of Ukrainian army, to stop killing of children, of, uh, of civilian population, to stop destruction of uh, infrastructure. And uh, we will do this uh, job, but uh, there, is a, there is another dimension to this already, because uh, people in the liberated uh, territories, uh, they are much, very much welcoming the fact that uh, they are now being returned their basic rights, uh, their right to speak uh, Russian language, their right to honor the heroes who have liberated uh, these well, they're territories not allowed to speak uh, during out the against Second against World President War. Putin, are they? They're not allowed uh, to speak out against I don't, President Putin, I don't, Putin, I don't think that there are any problems for them to speak against President Putin. But why would, would they speak against President Putin? Because he's liberating them from, from the Ukrainian regime, uh, the regime that you even don't know the dimensions of it. And uh, you are very shy to tell this to your audience, uh, the degree of corruption. Do you know what's happening in Kiev right now? Let, Do you know what's, what's you, happening? What kind of political, political prosecution is happening in Kiev? And a lot of people are being kept in prison and being tortured because of the fact they, that they have Russian messengers on their phones. And you absolutely don't show this picture to, to Western audience. Well, 16,000 people have been arrested in Russia. Can I ask you how many Russians have died in this war so far? The British head of uh, our UK armed forces, Admiral, Admiral Sir Tony Radikin, said he believed that 50,000 Russians have died uh, since the start of the war earlier this year. Is that a figure that you I don't know confirm? where this uh, this sir is taking his figures. Uh, I don't dare uh, make any claims because I'm not a specialist. I know that people are dying and this is very deplorable, but I know that the number of 
Ukrainian casualties, I mean, the soldiers uh, is uh, in increasing very much because President Zelensky is just uh, throwing their own servicemen there like uh, cannon fodder. And uh, Western countries are waging a proxy war against Russia with the help of uh, Ukraine. Uh, I know that there are a lot of casualties uh, and uh, this all can be stopped, of course, if uh, President Zelensky takes a realistic uh, position on uh, what is happening and uh, admits uh, the crimes of his, of his regime. And uh, there, you know that there are two aims. Well, uh, I don't think President Zelensky our... is in any mood to give up. Can I ask you one final question, sir? Okay. Why is Russia using gas supplies, gas supplies to Europe through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline and so on as a weapon of this war? This is causing huge problem to many civilians right across Europe, soaring prices, which is very difficult for some of the poorest people in these countries. When are you prepared to resume full gas supplies uh, so as to reduce the pressure on energy prices? Russia has been and is an, a reliable gas supplier to Europe. It was, it was not our initiative to introduce sanctions against Russia. So you should ask, first of all, this reckless European politicians who absolutely do not give a damn about interests of their, of their own people. As for the current situation with Nord Stream, I think it was explained in detail that there are certain technical procedures that uh, should be completed uh, with the equipment for the Nord Stream, and they can't be completed because of, of sanctions that are imposed against Russia. It, it was not us who imposed these sanctions. So it is a reckless decision of European politicians, including UK politicians, and uh, now you're paying the price for this, but Russia has nothing to do about this. It's your own, the consequences of your own decisions, sorry.